want to take you back 2,000 years ago when Jesus died. And it tells the story of the crucifixion. And, and we wrote the song, How Jesus Died. But the good news was and is that he did not stay in the tomb. And he wasn't dead forever. He rose again. And he's alive. And he's living. And he's here tonight. And I want you to get that in your minds. Amen. Thank you, Father God. <laughs> There were crowds all around him Stumbling through the streets They were swearing, laughing and yelling Crucify the king He was bruised and beaten There were thorns upon his head There was blood all over his face Running down to his feet They pushed him around and beat him And mocked his name out loud If you're the king you say you are Hey you, why don't you save yourself? But the love kept shining from his eyes As he looked up to the people and the cries Why are they doing this to me? If only God could set me free They threw him to the ground and put his body on a cross Nails were driven through his hands and feet And in pain he cried out loud But the people kept on screaming While they joked and tore his clothes Just look at that poor man, they said He's supposed to be a king but He was hanging there so helpless There was blood, sweat and tears They couldn't even recognize the man they loved so dear But the love kept shining from his eyes As he looked down to the people and their cries Father forgive them for what they say For they know not what they do There was darkness all around and thunder in the sky The garments in the temple tall and the graves were open wide Through the noise you could hear him call as his voice rang through the sky Oh God don't forsake me now, I feel so alone and Then he cried again, oh Father, commit myself to you His spirit left his body and the scriptures all came true Died on a cross in Calvary Died for the sins of you and me On a cross of Calvary yeah. Thank you, Lord But he's alive, amen <laughs> Yes, thank you, Jesus <laughs> oh. He's alive, thank you, Jesus Sunrise while the day was dawning As I awoke from where I lay Mary came, she was crying and screaming They've taken him away I could not believe a word she said So I hurried to the door and Then I realized she wouldn't be lying 
but I had to know for sure. So I ran as fast as I possibly could just to find an empty tomb. As I looked inside, I saw the strips of linen lying in the room. The Lord was gone. I felt a tear in my eye. And my friend and I could only wonder why. But he's risen. Jesus is alive. He has risen from the dead. He has risen. Jesus is alive. He has risen as he said. Went back home, wondering why, why someone would take him away. Then Mary waited and stayed behind. An angel appeared to say, Woman, why are you crying? What are you waiting for? If Jesus is not here anymore, he's not here anymore. We could hardly believe what Mary was telling us. The Lord was really alive. So we locked the doors, afraid of the Jews, and wondered, could he really rise? When all of a sudden the man was there, he said, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, I'm sending you to do what you must do. He has risen. Jesus is alive, he has risen, as he said, he has risen, Jesus is alive, he has risen from the dead. Now there was joy and happiness, the Lord was alive, he said, peace be with you. The Father sent me, I'm sending you to do what you must do. Receive my Holy Spirit, make disciples of all nations too. Teach them to obey my word and I'll always be with you. Then before our very eyes, a cloud hid him from our sight. He was lifted up to heaven as we looked up to the sky then two angels dressed in white said men of galilee why do you look up to the sky your jesus will come again as you've seen him go he'll come again i believe that tonight God is a good God. Uh, come on, sing this with me. He's risen. Jesus is alive. He's risen. As he said. He has risen. Jesus is alive. He has risen from the dead. Give him a clap tonight. He's alive. We worship you, Lord. We give you praise. That Jesus is right here tonight. You know that? I need to thank you, Father God. You are right in this room tonight. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are with us. If you can sing this hymn with us, I know you know this song. Everybody sing it. Sing it. He is here.
hovering all around us for the presence of the Lord is in this place. Come on, sing with us. Sing. He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. He Spirit, thank you, Father God. We bless you tonight. It's good to know the Lord's right in the midst of us. Amen. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise tonight, and I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will come and help me right now as I preach this sermon and teach the people that we will walk out here knowing who you are and what you want to do with us tonight. Thank you for the word, that it is the truth. It will set us free. Thank you that you'll help me to preach through the Spirit of God. You are welcome, Holy Spirit. We, you, when we walked in, you walked in with us. You are inside of us. So thank you for that, God. And thank you that you will let the people listen with the ears of the Holy Spirit. And let me preach through the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name tonight. Amen. Okay. We have to get our relationship right with God. Watch out that you don't get draw, drawn away, uh, even if you are born again, that you love God and you, and, and you uh, uh, know you're going to go to heaven, but your relationship is rock bottom there. It could harm you. It could eventually keep you out of heaven. Amen? Don't do that. Get your relationship back with God. If you don't think it's right, go and find out. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you, and He will show you. One of the things that will definitely pull you away from having a relationship with God is if you go monkeyizing. If you act like a monkey and you hold on to offenses and you don't let go, all right? The devil will come in there and beat you up and clobber you to death spiritually if you do that. I'm just telling you what we preached on Sunday and on uh, uh, morning and Sunday evening, all right? And then Monday night, 
We said if, uh, you, if you want to stay up there with your relationship with God, you've got to walk by faith and not by sight. Watch out that you don't go by things that you see. We, like we said this now, we don't deny that the cancer is there, but we don't function on that. We still trust God. We still believe that God can, will, and wants to heal. And if somebody then goes to heaven, then we know that God is still a sovereign God, and he can still have the lost say, all right? That person is then 100% healed. If that was his time to go, fine. We don't know when people's time is there, but at least we don't have to feel condemned that we didn't pray, we didn't fast, we were worrying, we had fear. No, we walk by faith, not by what we see, all right? And then, um, what, are, what are we preaching last night? The what? Compromise. Don't compromise. Watch out that the devil doesn't tell you you can serve God, but you've got to stay in the world. Okay? Watch out that the devil doesn't tell you, oh, you could uh, serve God, but don't go too far out of the world. Okay? You've got to watch out for that one. Uh, you can come to church Sundays and Wednesdays, but Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, boy, it's party time. Drinking time, cussing time, sleeping around time. No, he doesn't. That 50-50 balance thing, we got to watch out. I don't know about you, but I want to be sold out to Jesus 100%. Okay, so don't you dare compromise in that area. Watch out that he doesn't get you to, into compromising with your children or your spouses or anybody else, any other family member where he wants to break up and split up the family. You serve God as a family. You bring your children. If your husband's not saved and you want to get him here, tell him the guy that's preaching has got a funny accent. Sometimes they come and they listen. Really, yeah. And then and they get saved, not because of that. I mean, they've already got the word in them, but they, 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 they just listen to a funny accent. And the Holy Spirit can... Man, if, if God can use a donkey to talk to somebody, he can use a South African to get somebody, help somebody with a funny accent as well. All right. And I'm not saying I'm a donkey. Don't go, don't go say, I'm, you know, Hansi, you just like a donkey now. God can use a donkey. God can use you. And did I open myself with that one, Jeanette? My, I just opened the gap that way. Watch out that, you, that the devil doesn't get you into compromising. But it's okay. You can serve God, your whole family, but leave the stuff in the world that you need to serve God with. We need music. We need money. We need toys. We need clothing. Everything, guys, that we use. If I put on a T-shirt and I have written on yeah, Yeshua, people and, and, and on, on, on the back, it says he's the king of kings, Yeshua HaMashiach. And they ask me, whoa, what's that? Or somebody says, yeah, he's my king of king. I, I minister like that with my t-shirts, okay? Or whatever. You don't let your music and your toys and your things be in the world. Take them with you. Like Moses says, not a hoof shall stay behind in the, in the world. And you don't know what a hoof is. You don't know what a hoof is. Hey? Okay, how do you say it then? Hoof. So what's the, why are you laughing at me then? Lord, would you please touch their mouths so they can speak proper English? <laughs> Turn your Bible with me to the book of John, chapter 20. Jesus had just ascended to heaven, and he was, had, had been resurrected after he had died on the cross. And um, if you remember the story, before the time, the disciples deserted Jesus when they were beating him up and scorching him in the garden. They ran away because they had got offended. Remember, we did that the other night. They had got offended. They were irritated with Jesus. And they were in a room, and they had just locked all the doors, and they thought that they were very safe in their human nature. See, and they locked all the doors and they were hiding away from the Jewish uh, Pharisees and stuff like that. And the next moment there was a man in the room. He had walked through the wall. And it was Jesus. You see, our natural hiding and trying to protect ourselves from the things of the world is not always as good as we think it is. 
all right? Because the spiritual realm can get to us. So that's why you've got to watch out for these demonic things. You can hide, you can lock yourself in a room, but a demon can get to you and he could talk to your mind. But that's not what I want to talk about tonight. Jesus walked through that wall and I can just imagine what they were thinking when they saw Jesus. Uh-oh, oh, we're in trouble. <laughs> We had run away from him. We had deserted him. We did not do right at all. But you know, God is such a good God that, that, that he does not come into our rooms, come into our lives to beat us up. Even if we make mistakes, even if we do things that are not, not 100%, those disciples, they knew exactly what they had done wrong. But Jesus walked in there in chapter 20, verse 19. Please read with me what Jesus said to them when he walked into the room. Then the same day at evening, beginning being the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, remember that's what, why they had locked it, Jesus came and stood in the midst. And what did he say to them? You rascals, why did you leave me alone? <laughs> I thought you were my disciples. I thought you said you loved me, Peter. Uh-huh. No, Jesus comes in there and he says, peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus came in there and said, peace be with you. I want to end off this revival and I want to leave you with a blessing that Jesus had spoken over those people and which he has been speaking over people for years and years. Peace be with you. It's, I'm going to pray and I'm going to trust God when we leave here that the spirit of peace, the Holy Spirit will come with his peace into your church and that I will release that blessing into your church, into Pastor Gary's church, any other church member from any other congregation. I will release that blessing into you of peace because if you don't have peace, you, your relationship with God will not be like it should. If you don't have peace, you will be in shambles. You will be running around like a drunk chicken, not knowing which way to go. You won't know where to take hold or what to leave, what to believe, what not to believe. The devil will be saying something. God will be saying something. You will be thinking it's not God, then it is God. Everything will be a mess without the peace of God. People are looking for peace all over the world. They've been looking for peace for thousands of years, and they still haven't found peace. The only peace that I found as a young man of 29 years old was when I gave my heart to Jesus. When I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, that's when there came peace into my life. And I knew that that what I was didn't have to be anymore. And I got hold of this, Lord, thank you. And in everything I still do in my life today, if I don't have the peace of God in, in it, I don't do it. If there's any doubt in my mind to do something, buy something, go and minister there, speak to this person, pray for this person, do not pray for this person. If I don't have the peace of God in my heart, I don't do that. Are you with me? And it's time that we start getting back this peace of God, which is part of the whole, uh, of the fruit of the Spirit, uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. And I'm just wanna, I just wanna talk a bit on, but, but on, on peace tonight. It's time, it, it's, it's time that we get this peace back so that we can get our relationship right up there with the Lord Jesus uh, Christ again. Guys, because peace is very, very important. Now, before we do that, some of you just think, yeah, well, okay, I think I have peace with God. Now, what is peace? Did you ever, have you ever gone find out what, what, what peace really is? There are three definitions uh, or, or, or three um, ways that I want to explain to you now what peace is. What is God saying when he said, peace be with you? He came into that room, and instead of chewing out the disciples, he said, I'm leaving you, I'm giving you peace. Peace be with you. And um, I went and looked in the Hebrew. The peace means shalom. 
And in the Greek, it means irene, E-I-R-E-N-E, with little hyphens on the E's, irene. And that just very, very simple and plain means this, that yes, there's, peace means a harmonizing relationship between people. Are you with me? In the, now the word shalom and the word irene in the, in, the, in, in, in the Hebrew and the Greek, they have the same meanings for the word peace. So when Jesus was saying to them, peace be with you, he was saying, listen, let there be harmonizing relationship between you. Let there be love. Let there be unforgiveness. Let there be understanding. No strife. No arguments. No backbiting. No gossiping. No criticizing. Are you with me? That's what Jesus was telling them. Peace be with you. And if you and I want to get that peace of God back into our life, and we receive that peace back in, 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 into our life, if we're going to start arguing and strifing and, and criticizing each other, then we don't have the peace of God. Okay? And there's no harmonizing relationship. We don't need to go behind each other's backs and tell people what I think they um, did wrong. I need to go to that person myself and say, listen, I have an issue with you. And pastor, would you come with? Or let's go to pastor because we have an issue and sort this thing out and get that peace back in our churches. Are you with me? Well, does that mean we'll never have a disagreement or an argument? No, but you don't have to leave the church because of it. Or you don't want to sing on the praise and worship team because Jason doesn't want to sing what you want to sing. Or two of the girls have had solos, but why doesn't he give me a solo? Or, or Miss Joan just decides, listen, I've been here too long. Nobody ever sees me. I'm just playing the old organ. And she leaves. I don't hope you ever leave. <laughs> because this church will just go. <laughs> Do you know that you are such a, a pillar in this church? Do you know that? Well, I'm telling you that tonight. Because I saw you today in that, in, in that school. And you were like a pillar standing there and it's like everything is built on top of you and your husband think he's a great guy <laughs> but if it wasn't for you because I know how much my wife has gone through and how she's a puller for me and I want to I just want to tell you tonight you are in a symbol of peace for me I've never seen you get, get ever say something ugly about nobody I've never ever heard you say and you're always just smiling and just saying beautiful stuff about people and I honor you tonight because you have the peace of God inside of you and I wish a lot of the ladies will will will, will get it from you okay I didn't mean to make you cry, but that's okay. You can cry if you want to cry. That's okay. You need that honor tonight, okay? I just felt it in my, in my spirit. That peace, come on. God doesn't want no. He wants relationship. He wants good, harmonizing relationships between people. And he was saying, come on. That peace, I leave with you. That's what I'm giving you. And then we go a bit further. If we, if we look at what the shalom and the irene means, it just means it's plain and, and simple. Listen, I leave you wholeness. I leave you completeness. The word shalom and the word irene means to be whole, to be complete, lacking nothing. Ooh, are, you, are, you, are you with me here? Nothing going wrong, being blessed, prospering physically, spiritually, emotionally, and guess what? financially. That's what that word means. So what Jesus was saying to them, he said, peace be with you. Wholeness be with you. Completeness be with you. Prosperity be with you. Spiritual, emotional, physically, and money-wise. Health. That's what the word means. Healing. Go look it up. So he was telling them, I am, I, what I want 
to be with you. I want to leave with you tonight wholeness, completeness, healing, soundness, prosperity, that nothing will be wrong. I want, to, want you to be blessed. It actually means to excel in things, to go forward in things. Ooh. It actually means to be saved from trouble. When Jesus walked in there, he knew that they were afraid of the Jews. He knew how they felt, how bad they felt that they had deserted him. So he was basically walked in there and said, hi guys, it's okay. <laughs> You've been saved from trouble. Nothing's going to happen to you. You're going to be okay. You're going to lack nothing. You're going to prosper. You're going to be whole. You're going to be complete, you're going to be healed, everything's going to be fine with you. He, as a matter of fact, he never said that they weren't going to be attacked by the devil. Amen. He never said they were never going to be tempted by the devil. He didn't say that because you're going to be attacked, you're going to be tempted, you're going to be, uh-huh, the devil's going to come at you. But listen, if you have the peace of God that is with you, guess what? You've got completeness, you've got wholeness, you've got healing, you've got prosperity you got you are saved from trouble and God says I'm leaving that with you that must be with you in your lives all right now let's just keep on going okay Lord Hansi how do I know that I have this peace well if you have the Holy Spirit inside of you then you should have the fruit of the Spirit inside of you don't let this peace just lie dormant there you got to apply your faith that that peace of God works so let me ask you this question tonight do you believe that God has given us that God is a healer then you believe in the peace of God do you believe God is gives us wholeness completeness he wants to save us from trouble do you believe that then th that peace, peace is with you. And you see, if we put our mindsets in our Christian lives that God wants to heal us, God wants to save us, God wants to get us out of trouble, He wants to leave us with wholeness, with prosperity, with completeness, lacking nothing, being blessed, boy, then your faith is that God is going to do that. Yeah, but I cannot see it. Oh boy, thank heavens we preached that sermon, didn't we? We don't have to see it. we got to believe it. We walk by faith. We don't have to see it now, but it's going to come. It can come. And I think the more you and I open our mouths and we speak against the mountains and we command and we say, Lord, I have really got a need for a new truck. Lord, I really have a need for a house. Lord, I have a need for a, for a husband or, or a wife. Lord, I have a need for a, a new job or financial needs. And then if you, whatever you don't see, you just have faith that God is a God of peace and he's going to give you that because that's what it means. That's why Jesus said, peace be with you. I want those things to be with you. We've just got to accept these things and start living with it and start speaking them and believing him. The Latin word, the Latin word for um, peace is called pax, P-A-X. You know what that means? It means to be fastened in a condition of being stable. Too many Christians are unstable because they don't have the peace of God. The Latin word means to be stable and to be fastened like you strap somebody or a little child or yourself with a seat belt. That's what it means. And guess what? Guess who is your seatbelt? God. Doesn't matter what happens. If you've got that seatbelt on, you, got, you, you put on the Lord Jesus Christ. You use that Holy Spirit inside of you. You know who God is and you know that he wants to fasten you and he wants to stable you. Whatever wreck, whatever accident comes in your life with sickness, with um, finances with divorces with whatever you are stable you are grounded he's got you bound up he's fastened you that you the devil can't throw you around uh, you're not like a wave going up and down you are stable and that's what God wants to leave with the people peace be with you all those things okay now now remember those things um, what what we just said what what it is peace is wholeness a completeness uh, 
lacking nothing, prospering, being healed, excelling spiritually and physically, uh, being saved from trouble. It's to be fastened. It's a condition to be stable. All those um, kind of, uh, that's what it means. And also harmonizing relationships. No disagreements, no fighting, no arguing, no evil talk, no strife, no backbitings, all those things. We don't need that. Peace is having an, a, a harmonizing relationship with your brothers and your sisters and with your spouses, okay, and with your children. Now, I'm just thinking this. If Jesus can walk on a storm or come into a storm, look at the storm and say, peace, be still. He's saying, hey, you, storm, come down. And he said, peace, be still. Now, he's telling her to calm down, but he's basically saying it, come back to normal. I don't want you to be doing all this nonsense. Come back. I am, by, I am putting you in a stable position. Boy, couldn't he walk into any, your, any one of our storms and do the same? Couldn't he walk in there and let the peace of God, the wholeness of God, the completeness, the healing, the prosperity, the stableness, the fastening up, the lacking nothing, the harmonizing relationship. Could, could, could he just walk in there and his peace sort out all that storm that you and I go through? Come on, it's time for us to, to, to start saying, Holy Spirit, I need your peace. I need that peace in my life. Amen? Are you, are you with me? Jesus, go to John chapter 14, 27. It's interesting that Jesus said in John 14, 27, man, she's quick tonight. Peace I leave with you. There he says it again. He says the wholeness, that completeness, that lacking nothing, all the uh, prospering and the healing and the excelling and the saving from trouble, I leave with you. My peace, that's what he was saying, I give to you. And guys, God is, Jesus is saying the same thing to us. We have it. You just got to take hold of this peace. He says, I'm giving it to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Please, listen to that scripture tonight. God does not want you and I walking by fear or, 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 or being worried or getting into trouble. He wants you to live by that peace. He's given you, he says, I'm leaving you completeness. I'm leaving you wholeness and healing. And remember, that prosperity uh, uh, and the healing includes salvation, born, being born again, being rescued, being delivered, okay? It, 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 everything, that wholeness, that completeness is salvation as well, being born again and uh, um, being delivered from, any, from every problem that you have. God says, I'm leaving, Jesus says, I'm leaving you that. I'm not leaving you what the, the, the peace of the world. What peace does the world give us? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, they'll tell you, the politicians will tell you, we're going to have change. The other politicians will say, we're going to have another change. And the other politicians will say, we're going to have more change. And, and we're going to have peace. And we're going to, it's all, they, they cannot even do it. The word says specifically, in the, in, the, in the last days, they'll cry, peace, peace. And they'll try and make peace. But it's not the kind of peace that Jesus leaves. leaves. I don't know how many of you can remember how you felt in the world, but I can still today remember what a, what, and what a turmoil my whole life was. Everything was always like I had to do something. And when I got born again, it just, it's just like, okay, Lord, I can just calm down. I don't have to worry no more. I know. I know you love me. I know there's somebody that loves me. I know there's somebody that's, that's going to help me, that can help me. And when, and when you're in a storm, you've got to cry out to Jesus like those disciples did. And say, Jesus, if it's really you. <laughs> now, we know Jesus is really there. But let him say, peace be still. And he's leaving you that peace. We have that wholeness. We have that completeness. Jesus said he's leaving it for us. Some of us say, well, I don't understand it. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7 actually says that. He says, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. You see, some of us cannot un understand this. Some of us thinking, oh, I don't really know how this works. But Paul, uh, uh, Paul says in Philippians, he says, that, that peace of God, that wholeness and that completeness and that healing and that uh, setting free and saving you and uh, that you lack nothing and God wants to prosper, you see, sometimes uh, it surpasses all understanding. But will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, that peace of God. 
If you have that peace of God in you, that's going to guard your heart against anything that comes against you and your mind through Christ Jesus. Remember that Jesus left us this peace and make use of it. When something goes wrong again one day in your life and there is cancer or there is poverty or there is a divorce, you say, hey, hang on a moment. I'm not going to listen to your lies, devil. I'm listening to God. Are you with me? I'm not going to get angry or irritated about these things. I'm not going to go by what I see. I'm going to put my faith in God because I, my faith is in God, all right? And I know, man, I know what, what, what God can do because I've heard it, I've read it, I know it, I speak it, I believe it, and I'm going to receive it. I'm not going to worry about what you do, Satan. And guess what? Because of all those things, the peace of God is with me. So even if you bring your sickness, I know God's a healer. Even if you bring your poverty, I know God will prosper me. Now, even if my husband cannot get saved, I know God wants wholeness, completeness. He wants to save. You see, don't, don't fall back into that, oh, man, what am I going to do? Oh, this has come, come against me. You're going to be attacked. You're going to be uh, uh, g- going through tribulations and trials, and the devil will come against you. But you speak that peace of God against and you remind the devil what the word says that God is a God of peace and Jesus said I'm leaving you that peace and that peace is with me so I have everybody should be saying I have wholeness say that say I have completeness I have healing say I have I'm saved from trouble I lack nothing I'm blessed Mm -hmm. so I have harmonizing relationships yeah so you've got to claim that. You've got to say that and say, that's what God's left me. It's mine. And say, devil, you might as well leave because I'm not going to give in to you. I'm not going to compromise with your nonsense. I know what the word says. Okay. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Okay. Listen, we have a great advantage. If you go to Isaiah 48 verse 22, it says, there is no peace, says the Lord for the wicked aren't you privileged aren't you privileged the guy driving past you in the in the in the in his car he doesn't have this wholeness he doesn't have this completeness he doesn't have the healing he doesn't have those harmonizing relationships he doesn't have the protection of God like we do what a privilege we have, and some of us are still not enjoying that or still not using that because we don't realize what God has really given us. We still go around trying to fight and argue, and we act just like those guys in the world. Meanwhile, we've got the peace, but we, we should be acting like somebody that has the peace with us. But we act like somebody that hasn't got the peace. And those guys in the world, they're going around just wanting peace, but they don't know what to look for. They don't know where to get it. Mm -hmm. The wicked does not have that peace. They don't have that fastening, that stableness, uh, physical. They cannot excel like we do. Yeah, but Hansi, they also become managers and they become politicians and they become doctors and millionaires. Yeah, but that's, uh, listen, that's still not the peace of God. You can be a millionaire and still go to hell and still get cancer and your millions will help you nothing. You just, Jeanette and I bought a, bought a book. I can't remember what the book is. Her father had the book. Uh, it's Lost Moments When People Die. Remember that? Voices from the edge of eternity. People that have on their deathbeds, and they describe how some of these people die. Millionaires, doctors, politicians, great guys. And people without the Lord, how their faces are in agony and so some of them cry out no no and they, and they and they just die and then they have testimonies of people that are born again children of God they just lie there and just close their eyes with a smile on their face see there's a big difference between that peace of God but you know what guys Jesus didn't say he's just leaving the peace to us for the day when we die I want to live in that peace right now. I want to walk out here, and if something goes wrong, I want to have that peace in me that, hey, God's going to fix us. God's going to make this whole. He's going to complete this whole thing for me, and it doesn't matter what happens. He's going to heal it. 
Save me from trouble. Keep me stable. I thank you, Jesus. Because that's what he's left me. Amen. So I thought about it tonight. I said, how would you and I, or how can we use that peace as Christians? Let me end off with that tonight. How can we use the peace that God has said? Peace be with you. I, my peace I leave with you, not the peace of the world. How can we use, and if you want to write them down quickly, what are, how, what are the uses that we can make use of the peace? Because sometimes people say, yeah, well, you know, I don't know. Uh, do I have the peace? How do I use it? How do I know that I'm using it? Do I have it or whatever? Well, First Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 13 says this. It says, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, be at peace. Peace among yourselves. I think, number one, if you know that you have the peace of God given to you by the Lord Jesus Christ, and Jesus said, peace be with you, then we should exercise that peace between each other. Are you with me? Exercise that wholeness, that completeness. Well, how do I do that? Pray for somebody. Exercise that healing. God's given you the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit wants to use that peace of God that's been left to you. Go and pray for people. Make sure that your, your relationships are in harmony. In harmony. Remember, uh, I think I've told your church before, I've, I've, I've preached on that sometime, about disagreement and being, the, the word agreement means harmonizing, okay? Like a symphony in harmony. We all sing the same song. We don't, this one playing that tune and that one singing this melody and this one playing guitar and this one beating on the drums and we're all out of sync. That's disagreement. We all come together and we're in harmony, in symphony, like a symphony orchestra. We, we, our relationships are good. When we get into a disagreement or a, little bit, or a little bit of an arguing, then we get together and we talk about it. So let's exercise this peace between each other. Show people that you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you have the peace of God inside of you. Okay? Number two. Number two. Colossians 3.15. Let that peace be part of you, yourself, every single day of your life. Make it your own. So, because if it's not your own, you won't be able to do it with uh, uh, between each other. The Colossians 3.50 says, and let the peace of God rule in your heart. Don't let hatred or depression or anger or bitterness rule in your heart. Get hold of that peace and say, no, in my heart, there's going to be wholeness. There's going to be completeness. I know God prospers. I know God heals. I know he wants me to have, be friends with my brother. So cut that uh, gossip, cut that criticizing everything. I pray that scripture every day over my life. I say, I let the peace, and I make it personal. I say, I let the peace of God rule in my heart, nothing else. And I make that wholeness, that healing, that prosperity, that completeness, that stableness, that strapped up in a, in a, in a uh, uh, what's the thing's name? Seatbelt. I make that mine. It's mine. I speak it into my life. I speak it. That, that rules in my heart. In, no, no, not in your heart. The word heart there means your spirit man, your inner man, your will, your thought life. So the way I think, my inner man, my spirit man, uh, my thought life is God heals. God is, uh, uh, um, wants me whole. God wants me complete. He wants to give me good relationships with, with, with people. And boy, it works. It works. That cuts the anger out. That cuts the depression out. That, that, that makes me think, Whoa, okay, next time I want to say something, no, 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 the peace of God's in my heart. So I neutralize that, all that gossiping and criticizing and all that anger and bitterness with the peace of God. That's what I live according to. Number three. The number one is do it amongst each other. Number three, make it your own. Make it part of yourself. Number three. Romans chapter 10, 15. And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. It's time for you and I not just to 
between each other have peace and make it yourself, it's time to go and preach it out there. Preaching out there means that you go and witness the peace of God out there. That's what I'm trying to say. When you go to Walmart, you let that peace of God flow out of you. You walk around with a joy in you, with a, with a love in you. You walk around, and, and if you see somebody battling, then you react. You react according to the wholeness and the completeness that's inside of you, the healing that's inside of you, that prosperity that God's put inside of you. But Hansi, can I do it? Yeah, you got the Holy Ghost. You got the power of the Holy Ghost. Let him do the work, but you just go and say, right there. We, were, uh, we prayed for Kathy this morning. And as we came out, Pastor saw a man sitting there, and he started speaking to the man. And I'm over there, and I'm I'm not bragging here right now, okay? Jeanette and I stood there. We're waiting for Pastor. And we looked, and there was a man in a wheelchair. Both his feet was up. Man, that guy looked bad. Did you see him? And Jeanette and my spirit just jumped up. And before I could do anything, Jeanette said, you've got to go pray for that guy. I said, I know, blonde. (laughs) No, I didn't do that. I said, sure, let's go. So we walked over there. What were we exercising? The peace of God. Because what happened? Healing was spoken over the man. Wholeness was spoken over the man. I said to him, let the Lord make you whole, make you complete. I speak life into you. I speak healing into you. And the guy just just started crying. He didn't say a word. Okay? So what was I doing? I was preaching the peace of God. Put that scripture up there again. It says, how? How shall they preach unless they are sent, that's you and I, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet. Let your feet be beautiful as you go and you preach the gospel to people, telling people how God can heal, how God can make whole, how God can complete them, and God can save their marriages and, 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 and heal their finances. That's your job when you go tell people that. You are, you are preaching the gospel of peace. Uh-huh. Would you do that? Come on, guys. Oh, number four. Or oh, oh, where am I now? Yeah, number four. One, first Peter chapter 3.11. You have to. Well, how do I do that? How do I get this peace? He said, let him turn away. We've got to turn away from evil and do good. And we've got to seek or pursue peace. Because sometimes we've got to go after it because evil is so easy to slip in. It's so easy to gossip and criticize. It was so easy for me to say, no, Jeanette, I really don't want to go and do that because pastor's almost finished and I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. Now, sometimes God tells you to do something, and, oh, Lord, but I don't have time. There's a lot of time. Amen. You can be five minutes late for church, but you can't be five minutes late for eating with somebody. We're late most of the time, so whatever. <laughs> Seek the peace of God. Go after it. Pursue it. Run after it. That's what it means. Go off and say, I want that healing. I want that prosperity. I want that wholeness, that completeness. So because if you do that, that's when you can preach it out. That's when you can do it amongst each other. And that's when you can make it your own. If you run off it, after it, pursue it. Are, are, you, are you with me? I'm going through this quickly. Because, it, I mean, there's nothing difficult about this. And my wife's already showing me. Okay, no, no I'm lying. This is the next one, number five. You really have to do Isaiah 54, verse 13. It says, And your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. (laughs) How many of you have ever spoken that over your children? I spoke that scripture over Elizabeth every day. Since she was a baby, we'd say, Father God, Elizabeth will be taught by you. That's why I thank God we could have the Christian education that you guys have got in your school, the ACE, AC, Jeanette and I did on the road. Very good system. If if your child is ever battling with school, put them in a Christian school. Do you know why? Because they are getting, they are being taught by the Lord. They're getting scripture. They're getting Bible verses. And you think, yeah, but they can't become big basketball players. Well, they might become a big basketball player and go to hell. Make a choice. Or they might become a, a, have a Christian education and become a big basketball player. 
But it says, your children shall be taught by the Lord. We, we kept on saying, Lord, you teach Elizabeth. Lord, you tell him through us, through whoever. And then we prayed this, great shall be the peace of Elizabeth. We spoke it over her. I prayed it over her. I was speaking over her life from a young age. Lord, great shall be the wholeness, the completeness, healing, blessing, the anointing, the power, the protection of the Holy Spirit of God over my child. Does that make, uh, make her uh, free from all, any attack? Or no, boy, that means she's attacked more than anything else because the devil knows she's protected. She's been spoken over, and she's fighting a fight of faith. But it's been spoken over her, and it's going to manifest, and just come to, it's going to go to part. And she's already got favor with God everywhere she goes because I've been speaking that over, just for the interest's sake. Over and above that, the other scripture, which I didn't give you but because I'm going to talk about children, the other scripture that I I would speak over Elizabeth was uh, Luke chapter, check it quickly, no, Luke chapter 1 or 2 verse 52, no, I didn't say that now, Luke 2.52, I, I said this one, baby, Luke 2.52, I would say, Lord, because it says, um, and Jesus grew up in stature and wisdom and had favor with God and favor with man. So I would say, Lord, just like Jesus grew up in stature and in wisdom and had favor with God and man, I'm speaking it over Elizabeth, that Elizabeth will increase and grow in wisdom and stature and have favor with God and with man. I spoke it over her all the time because that's the peace of God. Are you, are you, are you with me? Come on, guys, speak that. Uh, speak that peace over your children. You go home tonight, and when you pray, sometimes when you, when you pray, your children are there. Pray this prayer. Say, Father, I pray that my children, you will give my children wisdom. Let them grow up in God, in Jesus, and have the stature of the body. Be holy, be whole, be complete. Speak it over and say, Lord, I speak peace into my children. Every time you say that, you are saying, I'm releasing wholeness, completeness, prosperity. Remember, physical, spiritual, physical, and money-wise into them. Healing into them. S make them stable. Put them in your, in your seatbelt, Lord. Hold them. Fasten them that the devil cannot throw them out and kill them. Speak that over your children. All right? It works. Number six. Second last one. Romans 16, 20. <laughs> And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. You see, with the peace of God, you can crush Satan. You know how? Like those feet, and I, I know you're going to do that, Pastor, but like the feet or the shoes that the Roman soldiers had on with the spikes, right? The spikes were, were there to keep you strong, and Pastor told me the other night, but they also used those shoes when they were marching with those spikes. And if somebody would fall in front of them, they wouldn't stop. They would just walk right over them and, and, and kill them with the spikes. So you see what I'm, what I'm trying to say? And God says, with those shoes, with the spikes on, I'm going to crush Satan under your feet because I'm the God of peace. I'm the God who makes whole, who completes you, who heals you, prospers you. And that's what's going to crush Satan. Because what does he do? He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God comes to make whole, complete, gives you life in abundance. Give the Lord a clap. Yes, Jesus. So come on. <laughs> in Jesus' name, use that peace. Tell Satan, no. I don't accept your cancer. I have a God of peace that heals. No, I don't accept uh, this divorce in my life. God is a God that makes whole. He restores. So I'm not going to divorce my husband or my wife now. I'm going to fix this marriage. And you just listen to me, Satan. You can take my job away. You can try whatever you want to do. But I will prosper financially. I'm not, it doesn't look like it, but I'm going to because I'm a tithe payer and I give my offerings and God will prosper me. He's the God of peace. He's the God of prospering. Are you with me? He's the God of wholeness. God of, and my relationships will be good with my brothers and my sisters. Last one, Psalms 122. What should I use my peace for? 
you got to pray for Jerusalem. Some of you don't, might not like Israel, but if you don't like Israel, you are in trouble. The Bible tells us that they are God's chosen people, and it's out there it says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Did you read that? God says, if you pray for the peace of Jerusalem, if you pray for the peace of J Jerusalem, if you love Jerusalem and the, and, and, and the, and the Israelites, you're going to prosper. It says, may they, that's you and I, prosper who love the Jewish people, Jerusalem. So every day I pray, Lord, I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. What are you praying for? You're praying that God will protect those Jews. You, you, he will make them whole, complete, prosper them, keep them safe, keep them stable. They're a small little country, but they're the most powerful country in the world. Let me tell you now. And if you do that, then you will prosper as well. So use that and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We, Jeanette and I got a little Jewish um, uh, calendar. And when I see that, I said, I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I've got something to remind me all the time that I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Because I, because, and, and, and I don't, and that's why I wrote that song, Yeshua HaMashiach. I haven't sung that this week, didn't I? Why didn't I sing that this week? You guys should have slapped me. Not you big guys, you small guys. <laughs> or send your wife to slap me. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't say, because in my heart, in my heart, I know I'm not Jewish, but my heart is right there with them, okay? And I, and I, and, and I, and I have a love for them, and I've never been there. I've never, I would love to go there someday, but I know I've got to pray for their protection, for their wholeness, for their completeness, for their healing, for their salvation, and for their prosperity. And I do it every day because I know then I will be prospering as well. Okay, the, so let's just go through them quickly. You use the peace of God to, do it among, to, to sow the peace amongst each other. You... Speak it into your own life. Let it rule in your own heart. You preach it out. You go out there and witness it to the world out there. Okay, you go after it because you've got to seek it. You've got to go. Otherwise, it'll just diminish, guys. It'll just go. Before you know, you know, where's the peace of God? You've got to the whole day be busy with it, okay? And, you, and, and, and then you um, speak it over your children. Great is the peace of my children because they taught of the Lord. And then you crush Satan under your feet with that peace. You tell them who God is. And Satan, if you have forgotten, you are under my feet. You, okay? You're not, your feet's not under, I'm not under your feet. You're under my feet. And I have the power of healing and the prosperity and hold. I have the peace of God. The fruit of the Spirit of the Holy Spirit is in me. And just that one fruit, man. I mean, the rest of them are all powerful. But look how powerful peace is. It, peace is. It can crush Satan. And I pray for Jerusalem. Okay? Let me end off with the last scripture. Psalms 119, verse 165. And we end off the revival like that. Great peace. Great wholeness, great completeness, great healing, great prosperity have those who love God's word. Because you know what? That's where you find out how God wants to make you whole, how he wants to make you complete and prosper you and heal you. Come on, there's another scripture. I know how God wants to prosper me because I pray this scripture every day. Your paths drip with abundance. Get that scripture for me quickly, Jeanette. Psalm 65, verse 11. I speak that every day over my life and my, and my, and my uh, wife and my child. I speak great. Your path, Lord, Lord, Will you, will you get that quickly there? And then we can come back to this 119. Please, my baby. She has been so good this week. She is so quickly. Pa, 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 just like that. Give me Psalm 60, 65 verse 11. Why can't I remember the scripture? I know what it says. Your, you crown the year, as a matter of fact, with your goodness, Lord, and your paths drip with abundance. Come on, man. That's prosperity. That's blessing me. That's just not financially. That means anything. God, you're so good that it drips with your abundance. And the God's abundance is not just financially. It's healing. It's wholeness. It's completeness. 
Blessed be the Lord who daily loads me with benefits, the God of my salvation. That's Psalms 84 or 69. Huh? 68, 19. You're not doing your job tonight. You're not going to get paid. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? I speak at all the time. Go back to Psalm 119, verse 165. That's the great peace that I have. He says, who love the word of God, because that's where I know I'm healed by the stripes. I'm complete. I'm whole. God wants to save my whole family. He says, and nothing causes them to? Stumble. Another word for stumble is? Catch the ball. <laughs> to get offended. <laughs> Remember what we said? Offense means to stumble. So, if you, great is your peace if you love the word of God. And guess what? Nothing can cause you to catch that ball. Because you're walking in the peace of God. Doesn't matter what people throw to you, how they gossip, criticize. I have the peace of God. Amen. Give the Lord a mighty clap tonight. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. That Hansi preached short. Thank you. What are you laughing, Jason? See, he just gave a sneaker there. <laughs> Everybody come stand with me. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Oh, Lord. Listen. Okay. Thank you, Father God. Put your hands up like this with me. Say this out loud tonight and proclaim it with me, please, guys. So I let the peace of God rule in my heart. So I will go after peace. I will pursue it in Jesus' name. So I will let peace be among me and my brothers and sisters. So I speak peace over my children. Say, Father God, great is the peace of my children because they are taught of you. Say, I will crush Satan under my feet with the peace of God because God is the God of peace. <laughs> Say, I will pray for the peace of Jerusalem so I can be blessed. Say, Father God, the peace of God is part of my life. In Jesus' name. Say, I will not get offended because I know I am whole. I am complete. I lack nothing. I'm prospering. I'm healed. I will excel. I will lack nothing physically, spiritually, emotionally. I am saved from trouble. I am fastened in God's seatbelt. I am stable. Thank you, Lord that you gave me your peace. Thank you, Father God. Peace be with me. Say it again. Peace be with me. Say it again. Peace be with me. I accept that. Give him another clap. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you don't mind, keep your hands up. Lord, tonight I thank you that I have the privilege of every person in this church every church that's represented here tonight and every church where their buildings are lord we are the church it's not about the building but i thank you tonight that i can leave the congregations tonight by saying let the peace of the lord jesus christ be with you i bless you i bless you i bless you with the peace of god that there will be no relationship problems. There will be wholeness in your lives, completeness in your lives, physical healing, spiritual healing, marriage healings, prosperity, financially, spiritually, emotionally. Thank you, Lord, that we will lack nothing. Thank you, God, that we will be stable as a church. People will pay their tithes. They will come to church. They will be obedient. They will have the peace of God in their hearts. Everybody say, thank you, Lord. I will let 
the peace of God be with me. I give you praise, Jesus. Receive that blessing tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a shout of it. We worship you, Lord. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus.